Uh, we have uh, now uh, two more talks, a regular talk and a shorter talk about a, a tool paper. And this ne next talk will be given by uh, Philip Tasche from Twente University about deductive verification of parameterized embedded systems modeled in System C. Uh, yes, thank you very much uh, for the nice introduction. <coughs> and together with my uh, colleagues Raul Monti, Stephanie Drerup, and Pauline Blom, as well as my supervisors Paula Herber and Marika Hausmann, I have been working on an, a verification approach for embedded systems, which are systems that are uh, embedded in a physical environment and interact with it through sensors and actors. Um, and specifically, we've developed a deductive verification approach for the System C design language, uh, of which I will give the key ideas and motivations in this uh, presentation. So first of all, uh, verification f approaches for System C already exist, which are based on uh, various varieties of model checking. Model checking, of course, has some advantages. As a verification technique, it is very automatic, and there's, for plenty of uh, applications, there's uh, optimizations you can do. But fundamentally, it always struggles with large state spaces, be that through combinatorial state space explosion or through unbounded data ranges of, for instance, unknown program parameters. And so we wanted to use a different approach and we, we decided on deductive verification. Instead of exploring the state space of a program, deductive verification uses a logical inference to deduce that a program complies with the specifications. And this has some advantages. It can be done at a local level in a modular fashion on the method level and it easily supports uh, unbounded values through, through symbolic execution. So the verification approach kind of looks like this. Uh, the user provides a system C design and some requirements that this should fulfill, and our approach then encodes both the design and the requirements in the prototypal verification language, or PVL for short, which is an input language of the Verco deductive verifier, which we then use to verify the program. In this talk, I'll be going over these components of the, um, of the approach. I'll first talk a bit about the fundamentals, the tools that we, our approach is based on, and then I'll go over the contributions of our paper, first the automatic encoding of System C and PVL, and then a bit about the verification techniques that we've developed. And at the end, I will also briefly uh, go over the evaluation we've done. Starting with the fundamentals, System C is a C++ library that extends it with uh, constructs for time and event re reactivity and some hardware data types. It's often used in hardware software co-design and the idea is that a design is organized into modules which could re represent either hardware or software components <coughs> or something that has not yet been decided whether it should be in hardware or software uh, which can then <coughs> communicate with each other through defined channels uh, and define concurrent processes to uh, encode the behavior of the system. These are then run by the system C simulation engine with its uh, cooperative scheduler. And while they're concurrent, they are not actually in parallel. So in system C, there's only ever one process mm -hmm. executing at a time, uh, which the simulation engine then uh, simulates parallelism by only advancing simulation time after all the processes have executed. These processes are, uh, can interact with each other through events, so a process could wait for an event and another process notifies the event to wake the other process up. Uh, this can be immediate or time delayed, or processes can also just wait for a certain amount of time directly. This concludes my very brief introduction to System C. Going on to Vercor. Um, Vercor is a deductive verifier developed at the University of Twente. Uh, it specializes in verifying concurrent programs and supports a variety of input languages of which we care about the prototypal verification language PVL. You can see an example there in the bottom right. It, uh, its syntax is similar to Java and it has some other inbuilt uh, keywords for verification. The reasoning uh, in Vercor is contract-based, so the user specifies for each method a method contract 
with pre and post conditions using the keywords requires and ensures respectively. Um, and then the prover will automatically try to establish that given the precondition and the method code, the post condition will hold after method, method execution. VECOR supports a variety of models of concurrency of which we use uh, threads that are synchronized with uh, locks. So now that the uh, fundamentals are out of the way, onto, uh, onto the contributions of the paper. First of all, the transformation from system C to PVL. Uh, to encode a system C design in PVL, we need to take care of two components. The design itself, of course, but also the semantics of system C, which is uh, very different from PVL. So encoding the design is relatively straightforward. Each process is mapped to a thread class in PVL. And if a module in the system C design contains multiple processes that share data between each uh, other through the module, then this module is also transformed to a data class that the thread classes can share an instance of to share data that way. More interesting is the implementation of the system C semantics. Uh, system C implements its own scheduler, so we implement a scheduler thread that runs in parallel to all the process threads in our design and which uses some global variables that encode the current state of all the uh, processes and events in the design to encode the event and timing mechanism that System C provides. And finally, our encoding also contains a global lock that all processes have to, uh, all, all threads have to hold to execute, so that just like in system C, we have um, only one process ex executing at a time. Now, to give an example of this, this is a very simple uh, system C process, a sensor process that every two milliseconds pulls a sensor, and if the data it reads is below a certain threshold, it reacts in an abstract way. In this case, it just sets a flag. So to transform this to PVL, first transform it to the run method of its thread class. And you can see here the method body is kind of framed by this lock and unlock statements, which, allow, um, which means that the, method, that the thread has to hold the global lock in order to be able to execute. Then most of the functional code can just be translated uh, quite easily, but the wait statement, the timing component, uh, in line three of the original example is something that PVL doesn't support natively and so we have to encode it some other way. In this case, this is a timed wait in system C and we encode this through the event and timing mechanism. So we create another event and notify it with a delay of two milliseconds and then immediately wait on this event to encode waiting for two milliseconds. So. To start, the process at this point has to set the state of the event and itself. Uh, the, it sets the status of the event, which has, happens to have ID 1, to 2, which means it will be notified in 2 milliseconds. And then it sets its own state uh, to 1, which means that it is waiting on ID 1. And this encodes the waiting for the, uh, for the event. And then the process just spins in a busy wait until the scheduler has made it runnable again because the event has occurred. Until then, it continues to unlock the global lock and lock it again uh, so that other processes can execute in the meantime. And in this way, we can encode the semantics of the system C design in the PVL program, which we can then use for, as input for Vercore. However, we still need to, to put in some work to be able to verify interesting properties about it. And so that's the second contribution of our paper. For the properties, we distinguish between two types of properties, which we call functional properties and global properties, depending on how difficult they are for us to deal with. Functional properties are those that are, <coughs> relative, that are very easy to deal with. They're the typical like deductive verification properties, um, a method contract that describes how the output of the method depends on the parameters would be an example of this, or an, an assertion about a local variable that can be verified just looking at the code of the method alone. Deductive verification is very good at this, and so we have no, no issues with this. Global properties, on the other hand, are those where this doesn't work. 
that depend on the global behavior of the system as a whole, not just one single method that involve timing, for instance, that involve the interaction between different processes, the sequence of events that occur. These are not verifiable just on the local level where the prover is looking, and so they're quite hard to verify directly with deductive verification. Um, however, many properties in embedded systems that we're interested in, yeah, especially timing properties, for instance, are of such a global nature, and so we need to uh, figure something out in this regard. So what we need to do is to give the prover on the local level information about the global state so that we can reason about it. And the solution for this that we've come up with is a, to define a global invariant that we associate with a global lock so that at every point at which a process releases the lock and so there might be interleaving between processes, this global invariant needs to hold. And every time a process acquires the lock and is able to execute, the prover knows that now the global invariant holds and it can deduce uh, something about the state of the uh, program. Um, this is an example of such a global invariant, uh, and you might be able to see here, uh, highlighted in blue, there's a part of this that looks quite, quite structured, which is uh, directly related to the property that this allows us to prove. However, there's also a lot of random-looking um, invariants in orange above it, which are, which please don't try to understand these, these are very esoterical and I just uh, put them in to illustrate uh, the point that this is, takes a very high user effort to come up with these invariants. In fact, while the verification time of a program with uh, this invariant might be very low, only a few seconds, uh, coming up with this invariant for us took about eight hours about a system that we knew very well already. So this is uh, infeasible, prohibitively uh, expensive, so we need a solution for this. The solution for high user effort, if possible, is uh, automation. So the question is, can we automate this process? And the answer is uh, yes, kind of because it turns out that many of these chaotic esoterical invariants here, their purpose is not to encode a property, but to restrict the state space that the prover considers during verification, um, so that it's not, it doesn't think it's in an impossible state, and so fire a spurious verification failure. So instead of doing encoding this with some clever manual invariants, we can just enumerate the state space that is possible, uh, kind of lean, leaning on ideas for model checking here, um, and uh, encode it in this, this way. So this is what uh, this looks then. Uh, these variable valuations there encode one state in an abstract, in a very abstract way, so that's that's the advantage of this. This can be, this is only supporting the verification, so it can be on, at a very, very abstract level, only talking about really the variables that are absolutely necessary and no data variables, parameters, and so on. Um, and the actual verification about these variables will then happen at the local state using deductive verification, which is very good at this. Um, yeah, and then we will just have a big disjunction of these states to encode the state space of the program. This can be very large, but it is automatable and significantly reduces the user effort and might make this feasible for use in practice as well. Um, yeah, so to put it all together, our encoding of uh, a system C design in PVL then looks like this in total. We have the, the um, encoding of the design with the threads uh, that represent the processes and the data classes that represent the modules. We have the execution semantics for system C itself, with including the scheduler and the event mechanism, as well as the global lock that ensures only one process can execute at a time. And then we have this reachable abstract states invariant, which we, as we call it, the RASI, which stores the states of all the 
uh, processes and events in the design and is associated with the global logs so that we can use it for verification at the local level. <clears throat> to briefly also touch on how our, on our experimental results, we have conducted three case studies using this approach. Two of them are relatively small, a simple robot that just um, detects if, an, if it's running into an obstacle and then is supposed to stop, a producer-consumer example that just sent data through a FIFO channel, and then also a larger case study of an automotive control system that includes an ABS or anti-lock braking system, uh, which is a significantly bigger case study. And you can, all these uh, the case studies contain some program parameters and about them we were able to verify both functional and global properties. So we are, we are able to do both at the local level and also on the global level. For, as for <coughs> verification time, you can see the small examples are really not a problem. They're both uh, verified in under a minute, although the anti-lock braking system took about three hours for us to verify. <coughs> so a significantly bigger system taking significantly more time, although when we compare it to <coughs> a local variant of the same case study, in which we only care about local properties, uh, we see that almost all of this time is spent trying to verify the RASI and the global properties, which makes sense because this is the weakness of the deductive verification. However, also to put this into perspective, we also tried to verify this case study with two other approaches that already exist for system C verification based on model checking, and neither could verify this design at all. To briefly conclude, uh, to summarize uh, our contributions, we have developed a deductive verification approach for System C. We've written a tool to transform System C to PVL, and we've developed some techniques to verify also global properties, which are not usually easy to do for deductive verification, including the RASI, a technique to reduce user, eff user effort. All of uh, this uh, is uh, evaluated in our case studies, which seems to work well there, and we've we were able to show some advantages over other systems in dealing with both functional and also global properties, for instance, and uh, showing a good scalability with regard to these unbounded program parameters and large data ranges. Uh, we were also found in our uh, ex um, evaluation, though, some points for improvement. The manual effort is still relatively high, and if you look at our artifact, which you can find in our paper or through the QR code here on the right, um, you can uh, see a detailed list of all the manual steps that are necessary. And we also need to look further at the RASI. However, considering the comparison with existing approaches, I still, still think our results are quite promising and that we can deal with these in future work. With this, I thank you for your attention and look forward to hearing your questions. Thank you. Questions? Wonderful work. Thank you very much. Um, I had a question about that uh, table of results, that, you know, very large time. Is that including the manual effort no. also? This is just a tool effort. Yes. So, so what, is, what do you think is causing all that time for verification? This is just running the solver, right? Um, yes. So the, uh, the majority of the time is spent trying to prove the uh, RASI, which is quite large for this, uh, for this design, and also to prove the global properties. I mean, SMT, you're using some SMT solver. Yes. They can chew up these things, you know, they can chew up very large VCs, um, very fast. Yes, but it is, it is really, really large. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you have to, so you see the uh, number of states in the RASI there in the table. Um, you also have to consider that is significantly larger than in the other case studies, of course, but it's also, because it's such a, it has so, so many more processes and so many more events to include. The number of atomic conditions in the RASI is just off the charts. So that is uh, what, what is the bottleneck at this moment. Okay. One more quick question there. Maybe uh, next speaker can take that.
Hi, and thank you very much for the talk. Um, when we tried to do this, the, the problem we ran into was that System C really is C++, and parsing and doing semantic analysis and working on C++ is horrible. Mm. Um, I wondered, did you have a, a, a smart way around that? Like, um, did you write a full C++ uh, parser? Disallow um, everything that is uh, problematic. Isn't that basically. the whole language? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's like plus operations are okay. <laughs> you say <laughs> that. <laughs> now, so uh, we are working on a restricted subset of uh, the system C that is possible. We don't allow TLM, for instance. We work on uh, static designs, and then it's it is manageable. Okay, and you do all your own parsing and yes. semantic. Wow. Should have put a slide in about that. So that's well impressive. I was Cheers. already a minute over time, so thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you again.